Good evening. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight for this conclusion of my series of justica- Justification by Faith. Um, thank you for tuning in all the past series. Um, I hope you did enjoy it and get a lot out of it. Um, we always seem to get a lot out of when God's Word is brought forward to us. And uh, tonight we're going to wrap up that series. Uh, tonight's series is uh, going to be in Romans chapter 5. Uh, we're going to focus on uh, just on uh, verse 5 uh, for the beginning of the study. So if you can turn your Bibles to verse 5, we'll start with that, and then we'll pray, and we'll dive into it like usual. So again, it's Romans chapter 5, verse 5. I'll give you a minute to get there. Okay. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. And maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day that we have today. We thank you for finally lowering the humidity down enough for us to be able to enjoy outside and We just thank you for everything that we see when we are outside. We thank you for your creation, Lord. We know when we look around, Lord, that everything that we see is done by you. And we thank you for that. And we thank you for for saving us, Father. And I thank you especially today, Father, uh, as two years ago today, I was baptized here at First Baptist Church of Medford and what a glorious day that was, Father, and I thank you for enabling me to come to that day and to come to this wonderful church. I ask that your word be brought forward tonight, Father, through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, and again, we thank you, Father, for your Son, the cross, the bloodshed which forgave our sins. Through Jesus Christ, I pray, amen. All right, so... Just to start off real briefly, uh, as many of you know, the two years ago that uh, I, was, I was baptized here, and what a wonderful experience that was, and a, and a life-changing experience for me that was. Um, the biggest life-changing experience, of course, was when the day that I was saved prior to that, on um, January 20th, 2018, at a little past three o'clock in the afternoon. And I remember it like it was yesterday. And it's amazing what you can't remember and what you can't remember. I can't remember what I did 10 minutes ago, but I can remember that day because it was so important. And it's the important things in our lives that we remember. And I want to thank every single person in here for uh, participating in that day of of my baptism two years ago today. And um, I got to talk to somebody from my past church and they just they simply asked me um since i've been saved what has been the biggest difference from from the past and i told them in the past i knew who jesus christ was now i have a relationship with him and that's the most important thing for all of us amen so diving into romans chapter 5 verse 5 And hope maketh not ashamed. We're not ashamed of that hope that we have in the glory of God that I talked about last week. We're not not ashamed of the gospel. Paul said it in Romans, I believe. uh, I know it's in Romans. I can't remember the chapter or, or, or the verse. But I know he's not ashamed of the gospel. And that's what we should not be ashamed of the gospel. Should not be ashamed to spread the gospel to others and to read the gospel to others. I always carry a little Bible with me. It's in my car right now, and I'm always ready. And Paul tells us to be ready. And the Bible tells us to be ready when we're going out there. We're, the, we're in the Lord's army, and we've got to be ready to serve every single minute of every single day. And that's the hope that make us not ashamed. And <clears throat> I read this last week. I'm going to read it again. But that having already been justified, as we've been talking about, 
We have a hope that cannot be humiliated. The hope we have is in the glory of God. We have no reason to fear humiliation on Judgment Day, for we now belong to God. Even though our hope will be tested in the cauldron of fiery tribulation, it will be proved genuine. And if you look at back into verse 5 again, if we go back into that, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. Our hearts are flooded with God's love for us. Because we have been justified, but more than that, there is another benefit which accompanies justification. And that is the last part of verse 5. The Holy Ghost which is given unto us. That is, to me, one of the greatest gifts ever. The Holy, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit given unto us, that indwelling of the Holy Spirit that empowers us to be able to do everything that we do for God, for Jesus Christ, for what he did for us. We're now enabled by that gift of the Holy Ghost that we can go out and do what we need to do to introduce people to Christ. And lately, I've had quite a few opportunities to talk to people about Christ. And it's just unbelievable to me how I can blurt out a, a verse of Scripture, and I'm not very good at rem memorizing anything. But it's just absolutely amazing to me when that verse of Scripture comes out, I know it's the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, that gift of the Holy Spirit that's enabling me to do that. And I know it's God saying, this is the verse of Scripture that this person needs to hear. And it's always a different verse for different people. And it's just amazing to see how God works in your lives. And this is something that you can use when you talk to people that he's always working in your life. When you have faith in his son and you're saved, there's nothing that we can't do. Nothing's impossible for him. Nothing's impossible for us. And that Holy Ghost, which is given unto us, God has implanted within our hearts evidence that we belong to him and that we love the one who first loved us. And in first in first John, if you turn to first John chapter four, verse nineteen. And many of you know this. Uh, this is one of one of the verses that I actually did know. We love him because he first loved us. And when I go back to reading again, God has implanted within our hearts evidence that we belong to him and that we love the one who loved us, who, who first loved us. We love Jesus Christ. We love God because he loved us first. He chose us. He saved each and every one of us. And my favorite song, the verse in my favorite song. He saved a wretch like me. I was. I was out there. And he saved me. And I'm sure each and every one of us have their own personal story of being saved. And looking back on it and saying, wow, he saved me? Amazing. And when we think about that day and what he did for us, there's no way that the first part of verse 5 and hope make us not ashamed there's no way we can't believe that because we're not ashamed of that hope of the glory of God because of what he's done for us so in, in that verse we love him because he first loved us it is the Holy Spirit who pours into our hearts a sense of God's love for us 
not only did the Holy Spirit come to us at salvation, communicating God's love for us, but Romans 5, 5 says, He is given unto us. He doesn't just come to us and leave when we need Him. He's given unto us. We have that indwelling of the Holy Spirit. It's with us continually, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year for the rest of our lives. He doesn't come and go. It is given unto us. What a great gift. Amen? The verb is given, the Greek, I'm going to try to say this, didomi means to grant, impart, or put into the heart. The clear implication here is that at the moment of salvation, we received the gift of the Holy Spirit himself. At the moment of salvation, the Holy Spirit is God's gift to us at the moment of justification. And then, when you think about it, Christ's righteousness, when... <clears throat> When we are justified by faith, Christ's righteousness is ours. God's love is ours. And the Holy Spirit's presence is ours. They are inextricably bound together in a package we call salvation. Amen? This is an incredible testimony to God's love for us. If you could turn to me uh, back to Romans. We're going to go to uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 14. Verse 14. I'll give you a minute to get there. Romans chapter 8, verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God. We are led by the Spirit of God. That means we are sons and daughters of God. That's what we are. And if you look down uh, in front of you, you'll see on my whiteboard that I had used last week. I reused it again this week to briefly talk a little bit about salvation. Because this is what this all has to do with. And salvation is our greatest possession, as it says across the top. And you see three categories. Justification, sanctification, and glorification. Well, justification is past tense. Which means we're saved immediately when we're justified from sin's penalty. We're saved immediately from sin's penalty. And then you look to the next one. Sanctification is present tense. Where we are now, we're saved progressively from sin's power. Sin has no power over us when we have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. Glorification, future tense, we're saved ultimately from sin's present. And when you look at all three of those, there's one common theme. Saved, saved, saved. Once we are saved, we have this. And I remember listening to uh, Steve in Sunday school when he was doing um, his study on Ephesians. And this is, when he read this, this is the first time I ever heard the, these two verses. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, and everybody I think knows those. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And that verse has always stuck with me throughout everything. And uh, <clears throat> thank you, Steve, again, um, when, when he did that uh, lesson on Ephesians in Sunday school, that really... Uh, was the verse that really hit me and stuck with me and really explained a lot about my salvation. Um, <clears throat> back to Romans chapter 5, I was looking at it, and 
I was uh, reading through the whole entire chapter and um, titled it, uh, Justified by the Blood of Christ. This is, this is how we're justified. We're justified by the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ did what? For, forgave us from our sins. Past, present, and future. Doesn't mean that we're, you know, allowed to go on continuing sin, and we know that God reminds us when we do. So, but <clears throat> it's justified by the blood of Christ. And if you look at Romans 5, where we're at, in, in, in chapter 5, if you look at verse 9, which is, uh, you know, just a couple more verses ahead, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Well, what does that mean? Saved from wrath through him. The reference to the blood of Jesus Christ in that uh, verse 9 include the reality that he bled in his death, which was a necessity to fulfill the Old Testament imagery of sacrifice. But it's not limited to the fluid itself. They're not simply pointing to the fluid, but his death and it an entire atoning work, uh, atoning work. And uh, <clears throat> if you go back to, um, you, can, you can write these down if you want to look them up. They're Ephesians 1, 7, Colossians 1, 14, 1 Peter 1, 19, and Revelation 1, 5. Uh, and that has to do with what we're talking about here. But turn to... Um, Back to 1 John, chapter 1, verse 7. 1 John, chapter 1, verse 7. And this, to me, this verse says, says so much. And I, I really, really love uh, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. Uh, I love John's gospel. I... I um, I just love what he did, and, and Revelation, everything that he did, and I've been studying on him for a little bit lately, so um, that's a little hint to the next time, uh, the next time I get to do, uh, <clears throat> to get to be up here, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be on 1 John. 1 John chapter 1, verse 7, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanse us from all sin. Amen. And that's what we talk about in this verse, in verse 9, justified by his blood. And that says a lot right there in that verse. Christ bore the full fury of God's wrath so that we shall be saved. So it says in verse 9, we shall be saved, saved, and also we shall never again come under divine judicial wrath. And you can see 1 Thessalonians 1.10, chapter 1, verse 10, and you can also look at uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9. And as we started off this series, it was in you know, chapter 5, verse 1, and for we have peace with God. In chapter 1, we have peace with God. We're saved, so we have peace with God, having judicially forgiven us of all of our sins, past, present, and future. He no longer sees us guilty of any sins. And if you could turn with me to Colossians 2.13. Colossians chapter 2, verse 13. Give me a minute to get there, too. There it is. Colossians chapter 2, verse 13. 
And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. And that's how we shall be saved from the wrath through him. He's forgiven us of all of our sins by the work, the atoning work of Jesus Christ on the cross. We who are saved were graciously justified by the blood of Jesus. That is, by his atoning work. And you can see that in Titus 3, 7. By his atoning work, the Lord Jesus dealt with our sins and paid their awful debt. And that, uh, you can go and see that in Romans chapter 5, verse 8. <clears throat> if you could turn with me now to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse nine. And <clears throat> this is going to come close to wrapping up the series here, uh, or tonight's tonight's study. Um, then we're going to read another verse after this, but this one was very important to me when I found this. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to ob obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. So we avoid the wrath of God. We avoid, as I said earlier, that fiery cauldron of tribulation. We'll be taken up before everything happens. Before the, 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 the cauldron of fire. We're going to be taken up and we're going to get to enjoy the rest of our lives with Jesus Christ. Amen? So if we go back real quick to uh, finish up, we're going to finish up with Romans. Chapter 5. We're going to finish up with reading of Verse 9, where, where we started tonight. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. One of the future benefits of the fact that we have been justified is that we shall be preserved from the day of God's fierce wrath. Amen for that. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much again for everything that you have done for us. I thank you for, for again, for saving me, Father. I thank you for bringing me to this wonderful, wonderful building, this wonderful church, this wonderful family, your house, Father. And thank you for the last few Sundays that we were able to get together and worship and glorify your name through song and Charlie's sermons. We thank you for the ability to be able to do that. And just want to again, just, just end with saying thank you for your son, Father. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for his blood, which justified all of us. Through Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, I pray. Amen.